This is a conversation with Stella Chandler about some of her experiences in World War II. I'm Mike Stanion of the Hemel Hempstead Local History and Museum Society. It's now February 2020, Stella. Would you mind telling us when you were born? I was born 1923. And what age were you when you left school? I was 14 when I left school. What did you do then? I took evening classes for uh, maths and English and I worked in a draper shop as an improver from 14 to 16. And then I had another job in a shop uh, for another year. At the outbreak of the Second World War, you were 16. Just going on 17. What impact did that have on you and your family? My father was in the Air Force and had just come back uh, from Egypt and uh, he was posted to Manston Camp just outside Margate. So my mother bought a house, uh, a small cottage in near to Manston Camp. So what happened when you became 18 years old? My father was then posted in the Air Force to St Athens in um, South Wales. So my mother moved, uh, got rooms in Barry Island and I moved with my mother to Barry Island and then I got a job in a shop in, uh, in, in Cardiff and went by bus from Barry Island to Cardiff each day to work. Yeah, why did you move from Cardiff? My father was posted to Cranage Airport near Holmes Chapel in Cheshire. And so I went with my mother. And my mother got rooms again in, uh, in Holmes Chapel. I then worked in an ironmongery shop. And the ironmongery shop sold all the things that farmers needed, such as nails, barbed wire, Wellington boots, all those sort of things, plus four candles. (laughs) Can you tell us how you were called up? What options were you given and what did you choose and why? Uh, I had a letter to say that I... Uh, was called up and I had to enlist in either the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, nursing or the Land Army. And I felt as my father was in the Air Force and my brother was in Greece uh, in the Army, I felt it was better to stay in England and therefore I joined the Land Army. Why didn't you go into nursing, Stella? Well, although I'd done a first aid course, uh, I, I, I didn't like blood. Right. When you first went into the Land Army, what did you do? You, you had a, a training course? Of... I was fortunate to be selected to go to Rees Heath Agricultural College. What did you do there? Uh, it, it, it was quite a, a rigorous training. We uh, had lectures in the morning and then in the afternoon we did practical work. We learnt about arable crops, we learnt about animals, about cows, horses, pigs. You received a first posting to go somewhere. What was that like? We all wondered where we were going and I was sent to this farm uh, on the top of the hills near Macclesfield and uh, it had no electricity and uh, we had to use paraffin lamps and make sure that they were covered so because at that time the enemy planes were flying over to Manchester and to Liverpool uh, and so we had to be very careful about the blackout. Did you have to pay for your accommodation out of your wages and what did you get paid? 
When you joined the Land Army, you had to be between 18 and 40. And the wages were 32 shillings a week if you were billeted off the farm. If you were billeted on the farm, your board and lodging was free and your wages were 16 shillings. National insurance and unemployment pay was deducted and wages were based on a 40-hour week, a 48-hour week, uh, and overtime was eight pence an hour. And I often wondered what I would do with my overtime money. It was a 52-hour week in summer, though in fact land girls worked far longer hours when haymaking, fruit picking, or harvesting. How many other girls were there? I was on my own there, and uh, the farmer's wife was very overworked. The farmer was very surly, and uh, the bed that I slept in hadn't had the sheets changed, and they also had a little three-year-old toddler who was so pleased to have somebody new to talk to that she followed me around everywhere and I was always afraid that she was going to be kicked by the, by the horse or by the cows. So I asked for a transfer and I was very pleased to, be, to get a transfer. While you were working, did you have a special uniform? My Land Army uniform consisted of two uh, shirts, a green jumper, a pair of breeches, long woolen socks, a very strong pair of leather boots, a Land Army hat and a great coat. Where was, where was your next posting to? Uh, it was to a farm just outside Holmes Chapel, which was very good because my mother by that time had rented a cottage in the village. So it meant that I could go home, get back to the cottage at night and cycle to the farm and back again uh, each day. Did you do all manual labour or did you use machinery? Oh, that farm had electricity and milking machines were coming in uh, and being improved upon at that time. And so I did a short course and learnt how to use a milking machine, which was very much easier than milking by hand. What sort of jobs did you do while you were there? It was general farm work. Milking, mucking out the cow sheds, and manure spreading. I watered the horses, carrying buckets of walk water from the well. It is amazing how much water a cow needs every day. One day, I forgot to speak as I went behind a horse. She lashed out with her hind leg and I went flying across the yard. I was kicked on the thigh and the pain was excruciating. However, I was young and very fit and apart from bruising, not badly hurt. Did, did, you, did you make any friends while you were in Holmes Chapel? Yes, I made a friend of Ethel, Ethel Bell and uh, she was very uh, kind to me uh, and she took me back to her farm uh, and her mother made me welcome. Did you keep a diary at all while you were working there? Yes, yes, I've got the diary. Could you read us one or two extracts, please? I'd be delighted. Monday, January the 4th. 1943. The red cow in the loose box is down again. We had her up on her feet by means of the tractor and a pulley, but she is very weak and her milk has dropped off. It has been sleeting most of the day and very cold. The shippons were not very warm and the cows have not given the usual amount of milk. What's a ship on? It's a Cheshire name for a cowshed. Right. Tuesday, the 5th of January. Snow on the ground this morning, and it has snowed all day. We put the bull into the loose box 
and have moved the red cow into the bull box. She is lying stretched out and Jim has sent for the vet. Snow prevented much work, but we have blocked the empty space in the barn with bales of straw. It makes it dark, but it's much warmer. Also, we brought the swath turner and the hay rake inside. What's a swath turner, Stella? It was for turning the hay uh, later on uh, when they cut the hay. Tell us about your free time. How much did you have and what did you do? By the time you went home, uh, you were rather very tired, but uh, my, my friend uh, Ethel uh, took me to young farmers clubs uh, once a week uh, and also uh, I went to cattle markets where uh, they were judging cattle uh, and, um, and do, looking generally at farm animals. Now, you told us you went to two farms. Did you go to any more after that? Uh, I worked on that farm uh, for uh, about a year, I think it was. And then in the village, I met Mr Cross, who had, uh, had a farm, but he turned into a market garden. And he wanted a land girl. And I thought it would be a good idea to do something different. So I went to work uh, for Mr Cross at, uh, it was called The Limes, uh, and that was at Sproston. Was that very different to the, the other two? The work was very different. Mr Cross had ploughed up much of his land and was using it to grow vegetables for sale at Crewe Market. He had a horse, several cows, hen coops, an orchard and beehives. My work was far more varied and interesting. On my first morning, I was set to weed roads, rows of spring onions. I bent to the task all morning and felt pleased to see the neat rows. But when I straightened up to ride my cycle home, I was so stiff I could hardly move. Twice a week, we bagged up vegetables according to the season. In winter, it was potatoes, carrots, beetroot, cabbage, sprouts, cauliflowers and parsnips. In the summer, it was lettuces, radishes, parsley, spring onions and mint. We grew flowers and I loved bunching the sweet peas, the calendulas, the dahlias and the blue scabies. And it was very necessary to have flowers because life during the war was so drab that people were glad to have flowers to make life a little more cheerful. Have you got any memorabilia about your time in the Land Army? Well, fortunately, I have. I have my Land Army breeches uh, and it shows the War Department label on it and it's very comfortable to wear. Uh, when you had to uh, bend over and do your work. This is the coat I had to wear when I was milking the cows. Uh, it, it was uh, necessary to put this on when you went to milk the cows because the cows might do a whoopsie while you were milking it. This badge is the badge that I was given when I joined the Land Army and I wore that on my hat. And the other badge is the one uh, that Gordon Brown thought we should have uh, to commemorate our work in the Women's Land Army. It shows a gold wheat sheaf on a white background surrounded by a circlet of pine branches and pine cones to indicate the work of both the Land Army and the Timber Corps. And that was given in 2008. When the war ended, were you demobbed straight away? No. Uh, we had a letter asking land girls to stay on because the country still needed food and the world still needed food. 
and so we were asked to stay on until after the next harvest. And so I stayed on and I left in April 1946. How was your service and contribution to the war effort recognised officially? I received a letter from Queen Elizabeth uh, and she said, by this personal message, I wish to express to you my appreciation of your loyal and devoted service as a member of the Women's Land Army from the 9th of November 1942 to the 27th of April 1946. Your unsparing efforts at the time when the victory of our cause depended on the utmost use of the resources of our land have earned for you the country's gratitude. Signed, Elizabeth R. Stella, thank you for sharing these experiences with us. The work that you and others did on the home front was an important contribution to the war effort, less dramatic perhaps than the fighting and battle scenes often portrayed in films and documentaries, but nonetheless vital in ensuring the survival of the nation and eventual victory. Thank you.